Welcome, Alice. See the chat going now, which is good. Success for a book group, that's a nice one. Okay, well, I think we should get started, Helen, yeah? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Um, so welcome everyone. We are absolutely delighted that you could join us this afternoon for the session on Lit in Colour and how to maximise um, your use of the books. My name is Alison Tarrant and I am the Chief Exec of the School Library Association. Um, before that, I was a school librarian and uh, battered, facing some of the same challenges that you guys are facing now. Um, the SLA just very in brief is an organisation that supports anyone involved with school libraries, reading for pleasure, research skills, so any of the activities or learning that would normally take place in a school library. Um, for those of you who have just joined us, please do introduce yourselves in the chat, say who you are and say what you're hoping to get from the session. We're hoping that you will start to talk to each other and you can learn from each other as well as from us as we go along and we have built in some time for questions and chat as well. Um, that is me. I'm going to hand over to Helen, my colleague, to introduce herself. So my name is Helen Emery. I am the membership officer for the School Library Association. So I'm responsible for making sure that members of the SLA get um, a good experience um, and we support people as much as we can. Um, I was also a school librarian in a secondary school for 18 years. I only joined the SLA in August. Um, I was super excited to hear about this project, Lit in Colour. Um, and I have to say, I'm quite jealous that all of you guys have got this amazing um, collection of books in your schools, um, courtesy of Penguin Random House. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping that you find this session um, really useful. Um, Alison, did you want to go through a few experts? Yeah, questions? yeah, thank you. Um, so it's probably worth just letting you know that there is uh, quite a variety of delegates on uh, this webinar, uh, teachers, librarians, all sorts of people. So lots of the things that we do have been designed to include as many people as possible. There may be little elements where you have to think slightly more creatively about how you can adjust something to make it work in your context. But if you have any of those moments, do just let us know and we can absolutely help you um, with anything like that. It's really good to see all the chat coming in. Hello, everyone. Um, this session is going to be informal. As I said, we'd really like to just use it as a chance to build some networking and kind of establish some uh, relationships that hopefully will see you through the project and that you can continue to build on once this webinar is finished. And to really help everyone get the absolute most from the session, we would like to suggest that um, it kind of works under Chatham House rules. So everything that's said is kind of confidential so that there's no such thing as a, as a stupid question or a silly question. Please just put them in the chat. And um, if you don't want to put it in the chat to everyone, to, to myself or Helen, um, alternatively, as a private message, that would also work. And the aim, the core aim for this session is to really focus on practical tips on how you can use the books that you have um, you've been given and also how to celebrate and build in and capitalise on that diversity in your collection. Uh, brilliant. So, uh, hi everyone, people still arriving, this is great. Um, fantastic, do take a moment to kind of read the chat. And um, there are some really interesting kind of comments and things coming in. Um, but without further ado, shall we move on? Helen, over to you. Fantastic. So um, when I saw the massive selection of stock that you guys have been given, um, I thought, how are we going to drill down in just this short time? Um, and really, I thought I would do what I would do if I was in um, a school. I would have a look through and just see what appeals to me. So I have chosen 10 um, of the titles that appeal to me 
And I'm just going to really drill down on those 10. Um, I think, you know, presumably most people, I think, from the Airtable said that they've got the stock there in their schools and you've already opened the boxes and you've had a look through. You've possibly done the same thing. Um, so these 10 um, are just some that I wanted to sort of highlight because we can't possibly, as school staff, know the whole of this collection intimately. Um, I think the key really is to find something that pings with a student that you know. So it's about matching this stock with the students in your context. Um, so I'm going to start off with um, The Boy with the Top Knot by Satnam Sangera. Um, this appeals to me um, quite um, sort of egotistically uh, just because um, it's um, set where I grew up. Um, Satnam Sangera was born in the same year as me. There were lots of similarities um, in terms of that childhood. Um, but obviously, in terms of, um, you know, being of colour, being um, in a household where there is um, a mental health issue, um, not being able to date somebody that you want to, um, is so far removed from my experience. So I think I'd encourage you to try and find those connections with students that you know and the things that are covered in these books. Um, so I relate to this just because of location and age, um, but nothing else is similar. So um, you probably know by the top knot, um, I should have said at the top actually, if this is stock that you already know really well, then um, apologies, but you can share in the chat what you thought of these books, um, how you would go about promoting them um, if, you, if you've already seen it. But um, as well as just being a, a great um, sort of autobiographical um, memoir that he's done, um, Lit in Colour have got some additional resources. Um, there's a Colour Talk, um, Lit in Colour Talk on YouTube um, that Satnam Sangera does. I would say this is more sort of um, towards the higher end, you know, Key Stage 4, Key Stage 5. Um, it is so difficult to try and pin down um, exactly an age recommendation. I know that was something that people really wanted to get hold of. If we don't know this stuff, how we're going to recommend specifically to an age group, um, you know, with, with finding that balance between um, sort of sensory, which we don't want to do, but also um, protecting our young people if there's content that, that might, um, you know, concern them. Um, but I would say on the whole, this one's more key stage four or five, um, and I would recommend maybe using those YouTubes um, in the context of this book. I think students listening to the authors themselves um, is a really powerful way um, of engaging them with the text. So my next selection, I've gone for um, You Must Be Layla. Now, I think this is the only one where you have an entire class set. So it could be um, within the classroom, this is used um, as a text by an entire class. Um, it's the lower end um, of secondary, I would say, um, more sort of year seven, year eight. Um, it's again, something that you might find students relate to because of um, other issues. They may not be Muslim, they may not wear a headscarf, um, but this is about her starting a new school um, and the context of bullying. Um, again, so, you know, something that students may be aware of, but have experienced. Um, so I really wanted to recommend this one to you because, again, it's got um, a whole host of resources um, ready to go that Penguin Random House have done so that in a classroom context, you could use it. Um, also, maybe a lunchtime book club. You could do an um, after school reading group, something like that, um, just to get students on board. Um, and relating to the text um, outside of the classroom if you wanted. The next one I've gone for is um, Homegoing. Now, I will confess, I've not read this one, but remembering back last year, um, there was a student in my sixth form who absolutely raved about it. And again, I think that's a really um, useful thing to do. Um, you could just listen to what students are reading, even if it's one student who comes and says, I absolutely loved this. Um, find out why it is that engage them. In the case of the student I'm talking about, she really loved her history. So the idea of um, the sort of two sisters 
um, that go in different directions um, and the, the historical context um, of the Gold Coast of Africa. Um, you know, she really sort of enjoyed that. So listen to your students' feedback um, and recommend them to like-minded um, other students. Um, we've got on this one, um, reading age of 13 plus, again, sort of key stage four, I imagine, but um, maybe some year nines might like it. Again, it's about knowing your students really, um, but home going is my recommendation. Again, there's a YouTube um, all about that that you might want to put on at lunchtime um, in your library if you've got that context, um, just as quite an informal sort of awareness thing as people um, walk around, um, have those YouTubes playing in the background, um, just to sort of highlight the fact that this stock has come into your school. Um, Rani and Souk Valerie, um, it's getting quite old now, I think, I remember this from ages ago, um, absolutely love Valley Ray stuff. Um, again, it's that um, context of history and modern day, say modern day 2004 now, um, a sort of Romeo and Juliet style um, plot line. Um, you know, they fall in love, they're not supposed to be because the legacy of their two families. Um, this was an interesting one in terms of the age range. Um, the, some, some people have put it sort of um, nine to 12, but I would say perhaps 12 plus. Um, it's not happy days, don't, don't want to give any spoilers, but um, yeah, Rani and Sik, you've probably heard of this one, but I just picked it out because um, I do think it can speak to young people um, quite strongly. So, um, Burnt Sugar uh, debut, um, this was the sort of thing that I thought might be good for um, a sort of sixth form reading group. I'll share how I ran that in my school. Um, we tried to keep it very much outside the classroom, so it didn't feel like work, it didn't feel like um, curriculum and uh, hard work. We got in touch with a local coffee shop who were more than happy to host us. Um, they loved the idea of, you know, maybe people spending some um, money on coffees or whatever. If you're in the sort of area that, you know, that isn't possible because of the socioeconomic issues, um, your local public library might be happy to um, host a sixth form reading group, I think it just to take it outside of school makes it feel a little bit, bit more adult. Um, you know, the buy-in is there. And then hopefully if you've got a, even just a small group of five or six students who are interested in looking at some of this stuff, they will generate some um, community around it. They will generate some discussion. It might be that they then recommend it to other people. Um, I do think that peer recommending books is massively powerful. So again, you know, if you've got a student who says, I really loved this, get them to spread the word for you. Um, I go on later about some ideas, but maybe a Lit in Colour ambassador, a student who aligns themselves with you and says that, you know, they're happy to do some promotion with you on this stock. Um, then again, if you haven't read it, they can read them for you. Um, but this one has got a whole English language resource pack. Um, this PowerPoint is available. I'll send that on to you all so that you can use these links um, so you don't need to find them. Um, I've done a lot of that for you on this PowerPoint so that you can open these resources really quickly. Um, but again, it could be used in the classroom um, as a key stage for text um, because the language resource pack is there ready to go. Um, this one, yeah, completely um, different sort of um, remit, I guess. Um, a lot of biography um, in there. There's a whole series, I think. Penguin readers are written for um, EAL students. So it's literally 64 pages, I think, really small, really highly illustrated. Um, so if you've got um, English and additional language students, students learning English, this set in your pack um, is really useful. Um, so you could use it with that weaker end. Um, I picked out Michelle Obama, I think, just because I thought they might have heard of her. And also this one is by Sheila Kanani. Um, and Sheila Kanani came to my school a few years ago um, and is a brilliant author. She majors on science texts, really, but um, I just picked it out because I liked Sheila's work. Um, so yeah, it's really accessible, um, maybe for reluctant or struggling readers, 
Um, you can get them looking at contemporary people. Biographies often speak to them rather than complete fiction stories. I will say that I have started a shared resource um, with Accelerated Reader information. I know that Accelerated Reader isn't necessarily something that everybody makes use of, but if you do and you would find that helpful, I've started a spreadsheet so that it has the um, book level and the quiz number associated so that I thought if you have got a library catalogue and you're adding all that and it feels laborious and it isn't necessarily coming up straight away, you'd have that on there. People who don't use Accelerated Reader, you can still use that book level as a rough guide as to the reading age of the text. Um, so it's later in the PowerPoint, but I will share that um, spreadsheet with you um, with that AR data on. Thanks, Helen. Um, we've also just had a question, if I can just interrupt, just because um, we've had a question about the information um, in the little boxes, I believe it's referring mm -hmm. to about the reading age and interest age. So as you mentioned it there, I just thought that it was maybe worth coming back to the fact that um, so we, Helen has started this spreadsheet to share with everyone and we're hoping it will become a bit of a community resource so that as you kind of find out the information, you can put it in and help other people find that information too. Um, but if, it, if that information isn't on the book list provided, um, where did you find it? So the publishers will advertise certain levels. Um, there are some other websites that um, are out there. Should, should I mention Book Trust? Book Trust are fabulous. We, we shouldn't have been. But, <laughs> Always. But, but as I said, Book Trust have got some guidance. But I would always take it with a little bit of a pinch of salt because, as I said, with Iranian so it said nine plus and um, for interest age. And I thought, oh, I'm not really sure. It depends on your student. You know, we all know the little year seven that is very sort of sheltered and wouldn't cope with something like that or the year seven who'd be absolutely fine with it so um i did get it from um book trust i had a look at um the publisher's websites um but it, it is a good idea i think to have a, a peer-reviewed thing that all of you guys could um access because then you could put your thoughts on that and share if you'd read it and, and your experiences of it does yeah, that absolutely. answer that question yeah i think it does and also you know, as we move through, we will be kind of referencing and pointing out more places you can go to to get more information about all the different books and, and even more books and resources. So um, bear with us and we will kind of build up that, that kind of knowledge base as well. Thanks, Helen. No problem. As I say, the publishers' websites are great um, to go on to to find um, more information. Um, but these Penguin readers specifically are for the lower end, I think. So, um, poetry, I thought I would include another genre. Um, we've had a bit of fiction, had some uh, biography um, and some poetry. So, um, Caleb Femi um, was, sorry, I've not got my notes on there. Um, um, I think he was the Poet Laureate in London, um, a young um, black guy from Peckham. Um, it's interspersed, not only with the poetry, but with photography. Um, so I thought it would really speak to the um, sort of male contingent. Um, also in your pack, you've got Stormzy's Rise Up. Um, so if you've got boys of that nature, um, you know, that probably would, um, you know, think, relate to experiences um, in a, you know, inner city stuff, if they would, um, I'm making a generalisation maybe not pick up a book it might be something that they would never do um i think that mixture of poetry and photography might just grab them in um which is why i mentioned this one um again sort of 14 plus i would say um i will admit i will sometimes just go on an extract off amazon um and have a little look through um and just get an idea and get a feel for it and you very quickly pick up um, you know what sort of demographic would relate to it I think um, so yeah I just thought I'd pick out Paul um, this collection of poetry um, connected with the um, photography as well I've still got people joining there with me sorry
Um, so in there, there's a lot of non-fiction um, and some, if I'm honest, quite niche stuff stuff that may only relate and um, appeal to a very small um, niche group of students. Um, but this one, Limitless, specifically would be great for um, A-level business studies economics. Um, I was chatting to a business as a teacher that I know, and she said that on any spec that is covered, leadership and entrepreneurship will come up. So um, it might be that you contact that department and say, um, any chance you can recommend this uh, when you're covering that. Um, you could put together a reading list of other stock that you've got. I think the idea of incorporating the lit in colour stock with your existing stock to normalise that is really powerful. Um, I wouldn't necessarily, um, you know, get um, all of the stock and think about um, sending that out just and highlighting it as um, other. Um, I think to incorporate it with um, other departments, as I say, this is an example for business studies, but there are other departments that you could relate to. Um, that last one, that photography and poetry one, your art department might be really interested in. So get other staff on board, get them, re them recommending it to students um, and get students reading it for their studies um, in a particular context. Um, I did not want to miss out graphic novels. Absolutely love graphic novels. I think a lot of students, again, find these much more accessible. Um, it's a very different reading experience. If you've got a graphic novel collection already, this is a great selection um, to add to. It's not just um, Persepolis, there's other ones in there, in the pack. Um, I would say that this one probably is a little bit older. So if you've got students who feel that graphic novels are only for the younger ones, this does deal with some quite you know, gritty issues um, of life in Tehran um, in that age category that you know, they could relate to. Um, it says it's immensely moving. So you possibly know Persepolis already, but I wanted to pick that one out so that graphic novels featured in your um, collection. And I think this is my final one, um, The Passing Place. I'd never heard of this, to be honest. Again, hadn't read it, so had a little look. Um, and it deals with transgender issues, discrimination um, at the, about the, the transgender issue. Um, I think it's that the sports coach um, benches him because he finds out that he's female on his birth certificate um, and doesn't let him playing the team because of that so again it's dealing with an issue a common um spoke about issue transgender in the context of uh character of color so i really wanted to pick this one out i think this is a debut novel i think it's got a very strong sense of setting in america um, so you might find some students love that, some students might be put off by that. They maybe want to read something set with in somewhere they're familiar with. Um, but yeah, I thought I'd recommend The Passing Place. I've completely lost time of, um, track of time, so I do apologise if I'm going over. But that was my 10 top um, selections that I picked out. This is just a few notes for me. Um, feel free to use this PowerPoint, so this will go out. So. If you wanted to use that top 10 with those blurbs, um, if you wanted to take off the reading age stuff, you could do maybe and have that rolling on a screen in your school, in your library, just as an awareness and advertising thing. Lit in Colour as an organisation have got a full book list that you can download. I'm guessing you've already seen that. You've probably got it printed in your pack. Um, but I wanted to highlight that that is there and I've put a link in this PowerPoint. The YouTube talks I've mentioned that you can make use of. Really powerful, I think, to have students listening to the authors of this stuff. The Excel spreadsheet, um, again, can be, as Alison suggested, a working document that all of you uh, make use of. So you can put notes, you can put um, cataloging type data. If we've got librarians out there who are thinking, wow, I've got to catalog all of this stuff and it's a little bit daunting, then you know, feel free to use that spreadsheet to pick out. I've started putting keywords in there. 
I'll start with putting Dewey numbers for ones that are relevant. Um, for those of you who aren't librarians, don't get freaked out by that. It doesn't matter, it's fine. It's just that if you are a librarian and you want to get it on your catalogue, then um, hopefully that spreadsheet could help you. And I finally wanted to mention the Lit in Colour Club. Um, that is something that you probably have heard of um, through Penguin Random House, but if not, um, Zahida, who we've been working with from Penguin Random House, said that the resources and posters are on their way. I think to set up um, a group of students, as I said, um, it could be an after school or lunchtime, having some student ambassadors working with you on this would be really powerful. And the resources that Lit in Colour Club provide um, could be a real addition to that, a real support for you. So I wanted to highlight that as well. So I hope that's useful. I haven't been looking at the chat. So Alison, if there's any other questions that have pinged up that I haven't noticed, then do let me know. Otherwise, um, I can pass over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so yeah, there have been some questions. I've been trying to answer them as we go as well. Um, someone saying that it's really useful to have books that they can use within different subjects and that's definitely something that you will be able to pick up from the spreadsheet as well and um, the keywords you know you can have a look at those and then see where they fit into your school curriculum um so yeah i thought it was worth just having a look at some of the things that may be um slightly more tricky areas, areas of discussion, areas that maybe might cause a little bit of hesitation. Um, some of these are things that we have picked up from discussions more generally, um, and some of them we have picked up from the Airtable when people signed up and they had um, particular questions to ask. So, the first thing is the kind of the importance of context. So it is an unfortunate um, habit sometimes in this country in particular, when we're talking about race and race relations and that sort of thing, we tend to go to a, a kind of a typically American context. Um, and it's just worth bearing in mind that, you know, the, the British Isles have our own very strong history um and if you oh Helen can you just click the button on the slides for me to make my picture there we go so if you haven't come um across the kind of black and British series that is worth a look so the image which is the black and white one is the full kind of text for adults then um, I think it was Macmillan also published a kind of a children's version of that, which is definitely worth exploring. It's one of the things that I, my knowledge was definitely lacking. Um, and this definitely kind of fed me a lot of really, really useful information. There is also the series on iPlayer, which is also definitely worth a watch. And if you've got something that, um, like Planet TV or Click for You or some of those, it might be worth asking your administrators if they can be kind of put into that system and kept that way. Um, so that is quite important. There was also quite a few questions around um, Black History Month and how you can really maximise that. Um, and the theme for Black History Month this year will be proud to be. Black History Month is in October, if, if you're not aware of that. Um, and that's obviously quite a nice link. I think one of the, this can kind of become a bit of a sticking point through the fact that you kind of have this month where you're like highlighting it and putting a spotlight on kind of diverse literature and, and maybe culture more generally dependent on how your school kind of celebrate it and support it. And then it kind of goes away and you don't see it again for the rest of the year. So it, I would kind of encourage and suggest that maybe this this year, now you've got this collection, you know, celebrate it during Black History Month. Um, I think the theme this year is really strong, proud to be a campaigner, proud to be all of the things that these books show us um, are, are, are happening. And then try and make sure that that just stays continuously and keep linking it back so that it's not 
one of those things that just appears and then disappears. And um, someone has just put in the comments, the Black Curriculum are a fantastic resource and their Instagram is very helpful. Personally, I love their Instagram as well. I'm absolutely with you on that one. And that is one of the resources I was going to highlight at the um, in, next. So, um, so we will get there. And actually, Helen, if you click the button again, we have yeah, one of their um, one of the Black History Month posts is here, which is one focused on quotes. There's also one focused on campaigners. Um, they've got lots and lots of resources um, for Black History Month. So go and have a look at their website. Um, you can buy a pack or I think you can download them as well. Um, one of the other things that can sometimes cause a bit of hesitancy is around book selections and how do you match um, a book to a people and Helen touched on this in her presentation and what I would say is kind of try not to overthink it there's definitely a sweet spot between your knowledge of the books and your knowledge of the children and being able to make those links um, but also you know it's incredibly important that children are using books as a window I think that's a, a metaphor we come across quite a lot you know windows into another world or windows into a life that's different to theirs as well and much of it is um, about sharing different experiences so it might be something like photography as Helen picked up in one of her books and um, it could be you know the date of birth or similar habits or it might be actually the style of writing and actually if you're not sure about any of those things one of the things that can be really powerful is about kind of taking extracts from the books and kind of just using them as little teasers so that children can kind of identify for themselves which ones are the ones that really speak to them. Um, and that can be really, really successful actually. Um, and you can do that based on kind of reading for pleasure where you give a much wider range or you can make quite narrow um, selections of, of extracts based around the scheme of work or the curriculum or the department. Um, so that is yeah, something that I would recommend. Um, and to help you with that, because obviously, you know, we're all incredibly busy. No one, as much as we might love to, has got time to sit down and read all of the books in this collection from cover to cover. So if you don't know the books already, it can be very difficult. Um, so what I would suggest is using all of the resources that have been provided for you. Um, but also, you know, we have a reading recommendations form on our website and the link is there underneath a little snapshot of our website. So you can, it's just a contact form. You can fill it out and you can just ask for reading recommendations. So it might be that you recommend a book to a pupil and they absolutely love it. You can then go, right, what else could I recommend to them? Because I'm not sure. It might be that you just you don't know where to start. So if you've got a book and you're not sure where to put it, whether it should go in the library or a classroom or you're not sure what it's trying to do, you can just use that form and ask us and we will find out the information and get back to you. Um, and again, I think the spreadsheet that we're sharing as a community resource will be helpful for that as well. There was also um, a couple of questions about um, whether to put the books in the main collection or whether to have them as a separate collection. And that's a very difficult question to answer. Firstly, it's gonna depend on how you're trying to use them, whether you're trying to encourage reading for pleasure or whether you're kind of setting them as a, as a kind of set reading target or reading challenge or something like that. Where this becomes a sticking point is around this idea of whether to spotlight them or to build them into your collection. And I would just um, kind of suggest that you can do either and it is whatever works for you and whatever works for your pupils. Just be a little bit careful that in either the way the collection is created, i.e. having them separately or having them as main, part of the main collection, or when using them as displays, we just need to be quite a little bit careful about this idea of kind of accidentally centering whiteness. So part of what Lit in Colour is trying to do is say that, you know, authors are 
black and Asian and come from the UK and come from abroad and anyone can be an author because authors are anyone. So if you have them as a separate collection, we just need to maybe do more things that tie them into the rest of the collection in terms of display so that we don't end up kind of accidentally suggesting that most authors are white or authors are white except for these authors. Um, and there's also this concept of othering, which you may well have come across, um, but kind of suggesting that there is, you know, a main theme um, and then kind of accidentally or, you know, it alienating um, the, the, the people who actually you're trying to bring into the conversation. So I would say whichever you decide whether to put them in the main collection or to kind of spotlight them and have them as a separate thing, just make sure that you're, you're doing the opposite as well. So if you have them in the main collection, you may want to do and just pull out or make sure that some of the books that which are on display on the shelves, um, some of the books which are facing outwards are some of these books. Um, and if you have them separately, then when you do a display about mystery books or you do a display about biographies or whatever your display is about, build in some of these books as well so that people can see that actually all together, this is, this is the really strong kind of collection. Um, I think that's it on sticking points, Helen, unless we've had any questions. Um, but in terms of keeping up momentum, Helen's not turning her camera on, so I'm thinking there probably aren't any questions. Um, so in terms of keeping up momentum, we just wanted to highlight some of the places where you can go for more resources, for more support. Obviously, the SLA is absolutely here. We have an advice line. You can contact us and ask any questions. Also, as part of membership, we have a quarterly journal um, and we review between, uh, you know, 100 and well, 300 books each quarter. And um, so there are lots of recommendations in there. Someone's already mentioned the back curriculum, so I'm really pleased it's the first one on this slide. And um, definitely worth a look, really nice um, social media interactions as well for just those quick on the go things to think about and things that you might be able to build into your day. Book Trust, sorry, Book Trust represents is um, from Book Trust who are a charity. And one of their, this, the aim of this programme is to introduce kind of um, black and Asian minority authors to a wider kind of awareness, a wider audience. So in terms of if you've, you know, if you've got the funds to keep this topped up, or even if you don't, and you're just adding one or two books a year to this collection, you know, have a look at this and make sure that you're penning from the widest um, widest evidence base in terms of where the books can come from. Pen and Ink is also a really useful resource. So it's published twice a year by SILIP, which is the Library and Information Professionals Association. And it is um, basically a yellow pages of recently published inclusive and diverse books. Um, so if you're trying to build up your knowledge about modern children's literature or modern literature, and you want to make sure that you're, you're um, being inclusive, then that is definitely a really good place to go. Um, the Jarlock Prize was set up in 2017, so it's still relatively new. Um, it was originally just for adult, um, for adult literature, but they did have recently add a Children and Young Adults Award as well. Last year, this was won by Patrice Lawrence, um, who is a fantastic, fantastic author. And, um, and so it's worth having a look at that. They're not due to release anything until I think May next year, um, but definitely worth keeping a look on the books which are being long-listed and short-listed, as well as the winners as well. I also just wanted to mention Decade of Diversity, which is being run by Inclusion Labs. Um, they have two pledges that they're encouraging schools to take. One is about um, building up the 
uh, diverse literature within a collection, um, in, ideally in the school library. Um, and you can kind of sign up to a pledge uh, that over the next couple of years, we just that percentage will increase, but also run a pledge around um, increasing the diversity, which is which are sorry, the diversity of school boards and um, so your governing body. So that might be of interest as well. Um, it is, you know, one of those things that's really important to not be afraid to ask, ask for help, to go to these organisations. I know any of these organisations would be really pleased to hear from you. Um, and to just ask the questions. It can be tricky and, you know, maybe feel like you're putting yourself out there, making yourself a little bit vulnerable. Um, but it is very important to, to just kind of keep improving and keep it going now that you've kind of got the collections. And one of the most important things, and Helen's already mentioned it, is this idea around pupil recommendations, peer-to-peer -peer recommendations. We know that children learn so well from, um, from each other, asking each other questions and exploring topics together. Um, if you have a library and a librarian and or a librarian, um, if you've got pupil library helpers, then you could definitely go to them and ask them. You know, what do they think or suggest they read some of the books? What do they think and get the discussions going that way? If you don't, um, then, you know, you could set up a kind of maybe a council that looks particularly at this or a pupil committee that um, engages with more of these books and reads them and then kind of suggests what to do or where does it link with them or what other reading have they done that connects those books together? Um, so definitely talk to the pupils as well. Helen. There has been a question in the chat that links really directly with that. Um, any schools that don't have a librarian, um, how we would suggest physically showcasing the books if there's no um, space? So currently at the moment in that school, they're in a classroom. Um, yeah. I don't know whether you had ideas of where to physically put the stock in, uh, to make it yeah. accessible. Yeah, so I think... If there's no library, it's about how are the, the ultimate question is, how are these books going to get into the hands of readers? So, you know, if you don't have a librarian and you're not worried about maintaining control, putting them somewhere like the dining room where you know all the kids are going. And if you put those books up there, they're going to see them every day. They're going to be eye catching. They're going to want to engage with them. Um, some schools do kind of little free libraries where they have kind of little bird houses, post box things around the school where, you know, you can put the books and then they, they can be taken by readers. I'm imagining that if you don't have a library and a librarian, then, you know, you're not, as, as, as no schools are, rolling around in endless amounts of money. So actually maybe you want slightly more control over the books. Um, so I would recommend kind of divvying them up and putting them in classrooms or having little borrow boxes. Um, if you can theme them and get them into the right kind of class for that theme, that's great. Putting some in the staff room could also be really powerful. One of the things that I, I always think is that, you know, when we're talking about safeguarding and we're all taught safeguarding, it's that any child can go to any pupil and have that discussion and every member of staff needs to be prepared for it. And I think about reading in exactly the same way, because a pupil is going to take a, rec a reading recommendation from someone that they respect and they look up to. And it doesn't matter who that person is. It could be their form tutor. It could be their teacher or the site manager, whoever that member of staff is. So it really needs to be a whole community response. Um, it can be really difficult to get teachers to read there's just so much time pressure. So you could maybe do little displays of the first lines to kind of build that engagement or just having like, just as Helen's done here for you guys, the book, a little bit of information and a reading age and put that on the staff bulletin, different one each week so that you're just building up the knowledge of all the staff. Um, yeah, 
that's kind of I hope that helps I know I moved off where to physically put them but it's gonna I yeah it's gonna it depends what you want to do with them if you want to discuss that in more detail drop us an email later and we can come up with with a solution we've got some other questions in the chat um one yeah. very specific about um the year eight unit on the gothic on gothic literature yeah. um and yeah. whether we've got some age-appropriate diverse texts that link with that interesting um, we'll have a look um, so one of the things that SA members have access to is something called a reading ladder. And one of them is actually on kind of Gothic texts because it was a scheme of work. Um, so we can definitely go away and have a look at that um, for you. So Helen, if we could just make a note of that. Yeah, um, I'll get back to you on that one. Yeah. Um, and then something about um, the posters that are available to help to publicise the books. Um, I think... So he did say that the Lit in Colour Club posters are coming out really soon. Um, that downloadable uh, book list is there and actually would make, if you printed it out, quite a good basis for um, a display to publicise stuff. Um, but again, maybe Sahida, if you could sort of send anything in the chat that you've got from Penguin that people could use, if that's okay. So, were you done on this slide, Alice? Then? Yeah. Do you wanna? So, I just did a few um, sort of really practical takeaway ideas. Again, sorry if this is grandma's second like scenario, but it was just if I had this stuff um, when I was at school, what I would have done. Um, and I think, as I've said before, peer recommendation is really powerful. So, if you could appoint some student ambassadors. Again, that might help with the problem of not having the physical space to put them because they could be taking them around. Um, but a student ambassador to promote the stock to their friends, to their classmates, they could even do PowerPoints for you. They could do some work on posters for you um, just to promote it amongst themselves. My second takeaway um, is about possibly having a diversity reading pledge so suggesting that students, um, you know, if they're regular readers, um, create a loyalty card scheme. So you can say, right, you know, this year pledge to read, say, five of the Lit in Colour um, collection, um, then have some sort of incentive, whatever your school uses for um, rewards and incentives for them. So I just liked the idea of um, them pledging to do it because it might come to their attention and then they forget it the following day. So again, to keep the momentum going, um, to have some sort of pledge. Um, what I would have done um, if I'd got hold of maybe just a starter in an activity for a class in the library was um, this idea of speed reading sessions. So I think I would have put a number of the books on each table, say all the poetry on one, all of the romance style stuff on another, all of the historical based on another, all of the graphic novels, all of the biographies, I would theme them, put them on a table, um, maybe in teams of four. So you could do this as a class, you could do it as a reading group, but um, a group of students around those books and literally give them three minutes, put a timer on the board, say, right, you've got three minutes, look at the blurb, look at the cover, um, maybe read the first sentence, first page, um, get them picking up the books and see which one in that selection they would um, choose out of all of them. Maybe one that they would recommend to somebody. Um, when I used to do this, they'd all say, oh, don't like any of them. But even if they don't like any of them, which is your least worst? You know, you can think of somebody that might like this book. Um, so, yeah, I used to call that like a speed reading session. So just to um, get the students picking up the books and looking at them, giving their opinions. And that might help you to get to grips with the stuff as well. Alison's already mentioned reading ladders. So, you know, we could get that resource out to you. Um, and then my fifth takeaway was this Lit in Colour Club. I think that's something if I was in um, school, I would set up. I think it only needs a small number of really keen students that um, want to engage with these books to make a huge impact um, and the resources that are coming out will help you be able to do that 
So they're my sort of five takeaways. Um, I'm just seeing if anybody else in the chat has got other ideas of how they could actually, you know, use this stuff. But not for now. Um, I think you read my mind, Alison. <laughs> oh, sorry, did you want to come in on that? Yeah, I was just going to come in with a slightly different take on the speed reading thing. Because um, some of the questions from the air table when people were signing up and also from the beginning of the session were about how can we use these books with reluctant readers? Um, and I used to do a slightly different version of a kind of, it's more like a, a, a speed date with a book. Um, so I would get kind of if you're in a class you had some um some children who already have their books already chosen and some children who struggle slightly more so if you know that a child struggles to to browse books and to make effective choices um choose a couple of books i would say a maximum of five then do like a 30 second introduction this book is about da, 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 da. it's really good because da, and oh my lord the ending <gasps> you would never believe what happens next book and it, and then get them to choose give them about 30 seconds to choose their kind of the one that they want to get to know more um and that can work really nicely i would also and also works really nicely maybe as a starter activity at the beginning of a lesson um i used to kind of do it with little groups and i'd spend the kind of a whole reading lesson going around and doing that so if you've got a, a librarian or you are a librarian that might be work quite well I also never do anything without talking about the importance of reading aloud for all of your students it doesn't matter if they're year seven or younger or you're year 13 you know introducing a book and then reading the beginning bit or reading an extract that you've chosen carries such power and this was really driven home to me by my, um, when I was a school librarian, by my head of science, because she suffered with, well, she didn't suffer with that. I hate it when people say that. She had dyslexia and she would really struggle with some of the pronunciations of words, but particularly names, place names. And at the beginning of a book, particularly, there's tends to be quite a lot of world setting, which makes it quite difficult. And the focus is, is on setting the scene and building the world. But if you're, if you're kind of working memory, your brain isn't free to focus on that because it's focusing on you know, how to break down and actually read the words, it can be a real challenge. So by reading the beginning of a book aloud, you're kind of allowing all of your students to really engage with that world building process. And then also you know, to, to go in with confidence to reading the book on their own because they'll have the main names of the characters and that sort of thing. So just to add those um, into the mix, there have been a lot of questions about displays. Um, so Helen, I'm gonna pass back over to you. Well, I, I, again, as my days in the library, I was never great at doing this. So if I'm honest, I got my students to do that. Um, you just give them the ideas and they will probably have much more creativity and time um, to be able to do it. But these are just a few that um, I've picked out um, that you might want to use as a basis for display. Um, so that first one is literally just using the covers. Um, as I said, they're on that book list, that PDF is quite high res. So it's really easy to be able to just print those off um, and just intersperse it with different logos. I mean, that one was the Black Lives Matter um, sort of time, but you know, other sort of logos, you know, that Litting Colour logo is really quite striking um, and just sort of splatter it around on the um, display board on that one. Um, I love the Blind Date book. It links to what you were just saying, Alison, um, about giving the first line um, and just a little bit of a teaser on the front, but wrapping it up so they're not looking at um, the whole blurb, they're not looking at the cover, they're not judging it by that. They could just choose it um, and then unwrap it. That's quite a nice thing that they sort of oh, I'm just unwrap this book and then they get to take that one. That's great to do around sort of Valentine's Day. Um, and again, that's just the first line printed on the front of um, the book um, cover wrapped up again, so they don't see the cover. Um, they just read that first line and that might entice them in. We do do, um, or we did do as a school library association, um, a competition for different displays. Um, and if literally you just um, Google 
library book displays there are loads of different ideas that um, you can come out with to feed to your students but again ask your students say how could we go about um, displaying these again you could do different themes on them if there's um, Halloween coming up you know find all the ones that have got a bit of a uh, horror theme or a bit of a scary twist to them and put loads of uh, pumpkins and spiders and stuff around that um cobweb stuff you know that always looks quite spooky and that's easy to like drape around a, a trolley or a, a display board so yeah Halloween but link it with something that is going to be eye-catching um but hopefully that's giving you some ideas on display and so really unless you've got anything else Alison I wanted there to be chance for you guys to share ideas of what you've already done um, and I know that Danuta, hopefully Denise is on um, from Lillian Bowley's Technology School, um, said that she was going to share what she's been doing with her Lit in Colour collection. Um, so if yeah. that's a, yes, I am, she says in the chat. So if yeah. I stop sharing this, I think um, people can feel free if they feel comfortable um, sharing their screen and sharing what they've done. So is that OK, Danuta? Thank you. Oh, thank yeah, you. I've just unmuted myself. Hi, thank you very much. I've just, just done something just very general about how this library has gone from having very lit, very few books written by authors of colour to having really quite a lot and how, you know, you can access um, resources from places like the well, obviously the SLA, but the Nas National Literacy Trust also have a great um, book list. Um, for our, I'm going to try and share my screen now. For our tutor group reading, because we're 80% black, our students here, um, we've got all black author for reading in key stage three, four, four, and four. But I'm, I'm not going to share a very big presentation. I'm just going to share the very first slide. It's a window, if I can. So it's just this. It's very simple. Can you see that? No, I think I've allowed you to, though. Just barely. Okay. Can you see? Can you see? No? I don't know I whether can't. you can see it. No, no, we oh, can't I'm at the moment. Well, um, right, just a moment. I'm trying something else. Right. Just, there should be a collection of about nine books. If not, Nita, what we can oh, do is right. include it with the resources we send out at the end. Oh, thank you. Um, Thanks. I'm sorry about that, Fail. Um, I'll just come back. Right, I'll, I'll just come back to say that we've really mixed up new authors with old established ones like Sita Brahmachari, Benjamin Zafaniah, Mallory Blackman, um, who was the third one, and Alex Wheatle. So we've really mixed up, you know, things that have been around for 20 years. We've revived that, and that's something well worth doing because to the year sevens, eights, nine, and ten, it's all new, you know. Um, the other thing we do, well, I, the other thing I do is I belong to like a local libraries, librarians group, and we have the local library educational or young person development officer. And um, they come in and they, you know, they highlight new books to us as well, which we then promote. We promote via tutor time as well as displays. We also have little slides. If possible, there's a maybe a YouTube video that can that really tends to get the the pupils' attention. So we promote a lot of the book via tutor groups. And um, yeah, oh research. Well, as well as the things that come to you, you could also broaden some of your research on maybe Instagram. Um, I'm not a big fan of Instagram as a platform. I see it very much as a young person's thing, but it has really, really taught me a lot. There's a guy who won School Librarian of the Year, I think, in 2017. He's called Lucas Maxwell from Glenthorne School. And honestly, I have had so many fantastic book recommendations by black authors 
from him. You know, so there's lots to follow if you want. Thanks. Brilliant. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. Thank you. And definitely, I'd echo that idea of tutor time as well. We haven't touched on that. Um, if your curriculum is so full that you don't have a lot of capacity and you don't get willing students coming along in their free time before after school break time, lunch time, then their tutor time, their registration time might be a time that you can make use of it. So, yeah. And um, uh, Helen has prepared the slides to make it as easy as possible for you to use them. So the YouTube links are there, the information is there. So hopefully once you get them, you should be able to kind of get going with sharing them with whoever it is that you, you want to promote. And I think I would just pick up on a, a couple of other things. There were some questions about how to encourage reading generally, regardless of that obviously including this collection um, and there's there's too much to go into in the time that we have left but what I would recommend so number one author visits seeing the authors in person or virtually has a huge impact on pupils the National Literacy Trust actually did some research into it and there is a really really positive connection between seeing the authors and and continuing to read and um, you know, you've now got this um, connection with Penguin Random House. They have all of their authors. There are lots of other brilliant authors out there. So do try, you know, and, and ask. Um, you know, that is something that quite often um, PTAs would really support funding because that's just such a feel good event. Um, so it might be worth asking them. If you would like more of a guide on how to get started with building reading culture and focusing on reading for pleasure, um, we will also share in the resources that go around a link to a free downloadable publication from the SLA called Get Everyone Reading. Um, and that takes you through um, lots of different areas that you can have a think about highlights lots of places you can go to for resources and support and also some really key calendar dates so that if you're looking for opportunities to do resources or to get it into staff or pupil bulletins then you can use those to kind of do that as well and um, so we will we'll share that as, at the end as well um, I'm seeing some really nice uh, suggestions and thank you, Helen, for putting that in the chat. So the link is there, forget everyone reading. You can just go to it and download it. Um, Alice, Alice has said she is meeting with our A-level art students tomorrow so they can create a display for our Lit and Colour Club. Um, she wouldn't rate her own art skills, um, but she thinks it will some really resonate with them in terms of creating something for students. And we would love to see the result at the end as well, Alice. So if you do take pictures, please do share them with us either via email or on Twitter. I think that'd be really nice for everyone to see. Um, and Pam has suggested that um, you could do an assembly for different year groups highlighting text they might enjoy, put in the YouTube videos or ask the head of year to do it, absolutely. That's a really nice way to get a whole range of books out to a, a wide range of people. Um, so, uh, did anyone else have any other practice that they want to share? I think one of the key things is also about, you know, empowering all your kind of all the other staff in your department or across the school to really engage with this as much as possible. Um, again, getting them to read extracts, putting them on the wall in the staff room, listening to audiobooks as well, you know, can be really powerful. And sometimes there's such a strong assumption. I don't, there was an article in the Telegraph or the Guardian um, from Law, Lauren Child, who was Children's Laureate, saying that children's literature is really looked down on and seen as something that, you know, people don't do if they're a proper writer. Um, and actually, you know, I the, the staff I used to work with were incredibly supportive of reading as a whole, but didn't necessarily see it as something they wanted or needed to prioritise. And some of them had made assumptions about the kind of content that would be in children's books. So actually, you know, it's important to smash some of those stereotypes and to get people sharing as widely as possible. Um, 
uh, Pam has also suggested creating a peer reading club and then doing peer to peer reading. So getting six forms to read with a lower school student that can work quite nicely Um, can work during tutor time. Some schools do it as an intervention. You know, I think it's it's important to know what the purpose is of that. What are you trying to get from that? Is it about improving reading levels or is it about pleasure and just keeping an eye on how it's making the older and younger students feel because that, that can be quite an important thing. Um, but yeah, sometimes it does work really, really nicely. Um, Helen, did you have anything you wanted to add? I just wondered whether Zahida wanted to um, update everybody because there've been a, a few um, just practical um, questions, I think, on delivery of the books. Um, and as I say, the Lit in Colour Club and some of the resources. Um, so I didn't know whether Zahida wanted to come on and share. Sorry to put yeah. you on the spot there. No, 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 that's fine. Very happy to. Yeah, we had a bit of cross wires with um, one of our other donations, which we announced at launch. So I'm aware that there are some people who haven't yet got their books, but that's because it's a, it's a bit of a different project. But thank you for being here. And I'm sure you've taken away lots from Alison and Helen. Um, yeah, so there are going to be posters that are going to be made available to you. They are going to be on a selection of books um, across the different key stages um, that, that we've kind of in that in that guide bit. Um, they're going to be made available to you with the resources pack for the Lit in Colour Club. Um, I don't know how many of you are planning to do the Lit in Colour Club, but this is basically a pack of digital resources that we're going to be sending to you to run as you like, really, from the second half of this first term and for next term as well, for the spring term. Um, it's going to be picking out some books from the Key Stage 3 guided ones um, and giving you ideas for how to kind of run it really with the sense that you can kind of just pick up and do what you want. And it's not that every student has to read the whole book. A lot of the resources are going to be picking up on certain themes. So I know that Stormzy is one of the um, texts that our freelancer is working on at the moment. Um, one of the books, Stormzy's Rise Up. So thinking again about kind of music and, and what it means to express yourself and artistic um, ways that we can be artistic in different ways and we might not realise it. Um, so that's all going to be made available to you with information on um, the different texts that have been used in the Lit and Colour Club resource pack and the posters will be made available to you as well. Um, I just want to pick up on something that Helen also said about printing the the lit in color incomplete list i think that's a great idea if you could print that to you know a3 a5 size that's actually really what you want because you've got a bit of blurb you've got themes you've got you know suggested age range and you have a really nice picture of the book already on a lovely background and you could have that kind of all over your library all all over a class wall so um thanks helen that's a great idea um I'm aware that you might have some more questions maybe about the specificity of the text. I believe that there was an Excel spreadsheet of all the text sent to you via Pearson. Very happy to, to share that again. It's got, um, you know, the ISBNs um, and the, the quantity that you will have received, as well as like um, a key stage guide um, that, again, is open to interpretation. You might want to kind of push one up, push one down, um, but do really go over that list and make sure that everyone in your department has seen it, just so that everyone's aware of what you've got because um, as Helen said there are some very niche things in there that you might like to, to bring out or have you know for certain students um, so we've really tried to give you quite a wide range um, I'll stop talking now that's okay just to come in on that and say that's what I used as the basis for the um, cataloging and AR data spreadsheet so it is literally just what you've already got um, but added to so that it will help in terms of cataloging so um, I didn't realise if you've already got that, you know, you can just be copy and paste it, that information into yours um, so that it will help you to um, get the right book to the right student, really. Mm -hmm. and then, um, yeah, and with those posters, you know, you, this is such a wide range, wide ranging collection of books. I'd go bigger than the, just the library or the classroom, you know, try and get one of those posters in every department around the school, because you know, if you're, particularly with the library, if you're doing library things within the library space, you're only ever going to reach the people who are already using the library. So using the dining hall, using DT and drama, you know, seeing if you can bring those in. 
um, you know, I used to work quite closely with my drama department. We would give them little excerpts of books that we knew were really good and they would kind of reenact them. Um, one time we got the author to attend one of these, which was really exciting for those kids performing. And maybe, you know, there stereotypically is some correlation between kids doing particular subjects and being less of a reader or more of a reader. So making sure that you're targeting those and, and bringing them in so that everyone's part of this amazing reading community. Um, you know, and in terms of, of staff engagement, if you haven't seen the um, what I'm reading posters that you can kind of stick on your door and then staff write in what they're reading, what they're currently reading, what they've just read, you know, and making sure that that reflects reality. So it is inclusive. Um, is, is really important so some some weeks it will be like I've only read reports because it's report writing season that's all I've done and other times it will be like actually I've read a manual of how to do this or I've actually you know I've listened to an audiobook or read a newspaper and so that it's really really inclusive um I was fortunate enough to uh, be attending it was an SLA event um, between Richard Gerver, who's actually our SLA president, and Cressida Cal earlier this week. And they were saying that um, it's this idea of role models, but role models being realistic and being relatable. So quite often when you get an author in, children will be amazed and agog and and kind of like they're like godlike because they're an author and they read it perfectly and it's amazing and that's brilliant and we want that experience we want to provide children with that we also want to provide them with the role models who are you know reading graphic novels or things that aren't seen as literary you know we want to hear people hear them we want to give them people to listen to who struggle to read the odd word or pronunciate a name or make words up as they're speaking because they're just making it up as they go along. Because I think we need to be quite careful in schools that sometimes you can kind of get that readers, non-readers, and it can feel quite binary and either you're a part of the club or you're not. So this is where, you know, that inclusivity of bringing in the you know, the site manager or the caretaker or the dining, you know, the catering staff, you know, what are they reading? What can they share? Do they kind of want to partake in any of these books and then do a presentation to children? Or could you bring parents in? Or, you know, the, the person who, read, who leads the scout club on an evening, you know, some other way of bringing children into this whole community reading culture. Um, I just coming on that, Alison. Yeah. yeah, just just to say that I think um, that reading culture in the home is really key. So that's obviously the holy grail, isn't it? But I think um, if students see parents reading, they will read. You know, and if there was any way that this lit in colour collection could be um, even just advertised, um, that it's there to parents, that your parent body are aware of its existence. Um, and if there was some way we used to do a family reading group where we would invite um, you could do dads and lads or, um, you know, sort of grandparents or whoever, somebody from their family. Um, and if there's two copies of some of the books, which I think there are, they could both have a copy and read the book each, um, not necessarily together. Sat they might want to do that, read it aloud together, but read it in sync at the same time. Then you're facilitating that conversation within the home as well um that was just something it was only really small scale but it was quite impactful because that role model is their family member and they're reading it as well so yeah. that's just another idea that came to me yeah and also with some of them because there, there are some where there are multiple copies i think there are more where there are single copies but doing a similar thing with um kind of a lower interest reading age and then a higher interest reading age but with similar themes so they're reading different books, but they're still exploring the themes and the topics and how they can react um, yeah, for which to those things together. Um, so I think that can that can work really nicely. Um, we'll just yeah. have somebody say that they already they do that with the um, school library pack from Book Trust. 
um, just to say if your school don't take advantage of that then they need to that's another set of books that you can get hold of um, and um, Julianda's uh, lending a family set of books so yeah you can lend all six and that you know everybody within the family can read that's a lovely idea I love that thank you yeah. that they could lend it as a whole family and read it all together it's, it's worth making really clear that that school library pack from Book Trust is completely free to, to UK state schools. So, you know, do go and hunt them out. In fact, we can send the link around with the resources um, because they send, you know, books that are really worth um, pupils being aware of, for sure. Um, I'm not... Does anyone have any other questions? I'm so excited on for all of you. You're going to have such a great time. Um, don't forget, you know, if you need any other guidance or if, you know, you're a teacher and you're sat there going, I've got this massive box of books and I'm not sure what to do with them. You know, we've only just started to just scrape the surface, really. So if you want more advice, feel free to get in touch. Um, use the reading recommendations form or email us at info at sla.org.uk we will do do what we can to support you um whether that's on the reading culture stuff or the more practical things like if you have a school library but not librarian what do you do with the books um we can help you with all of that so do just get in touch Fiona is saying, excited to get these books on the shelves. Yeah, absolutely. Fiona, I think you were in a school in Swindon, which is exciting for us because the SLA is based in Swindon as well. So, hello. Um, yeah. I think we've kind of picked up most of the main points from reluctant readers to display. Um, also, you know, some of the, I should say, oh, I wish I should have said this earlier, you can be really tempted to do really amazing displays that are going to take pupils hours and then leave them up all term and that's absolutely fantastic and go for that if you've got pupils or staff willing to do that if your display is a collection of books so six books where you've noticed a theme all facing outwards on the shelves or all in a classroom that will work too so often we're tempted to pour hours and hours into these things but unless you are talking about the books and you're referencing and you're building them in that's you know it's that it's in the discussion about books where the passion is ignited and people can find out more so doing some kind of lesson starters where you know playing a youtube video you know five minutes while you take register you know that that can work um you know some of those low energy and low time commitment things can have a really really high impact so don't you know don't feel like you have to go all out particularly at the moment where you're still getting to grips with all of them you know if you haven't taken the books out the box yet just take a couple out put them on the shelves Maybe skim read the first page, read the blurb, decide where they're going to go. Just start getting the books out there because as soon as pupils get their hands on them, you know, those discussions will start to start to happen. Um, and maybe, you know, as Helen said, reach out to the families. If the families or parents have read any, you know, can they recommend them? They might want to do that anonymously so they don't embarrass their child. But, uh, you know, ask them, see if we can get more of that engagement. Um I'm just thinking of other ideas because I'm not um, sure of, of the audience. You know, again, it's grandma sucking eggs, but we used to do, um, dare I mention the Christmas word, an advent calendar. So like just every day of December leading up to Christmas, having one of these books highlighted so you could use the collection, pick out, um, you know, 25 that you want to put out there each day and then put it on the um the brief in the daily bulletin or whatever you have um we used to actually again wrap them up so it's like i'm obsessed with wrapping books up but there's something about sort of getting that and feeling like it's a gift um and then each day you know you could have a different book highlighted that way we'd put it on a powerpoint as well and send that out to tutors so that advent book calendar type idea yeah. and um, you could definitely use that to do to celebrate black history month instead to do one book you know, on the staff bulletin throughout Black History Month, challenge the staff to read the books over half term, not all of the books, choose a book for a staff member to read, you know, or to listen to. 
um, or just to get to know a little bit better and try and encourage them to do that as well. Um, and Fiona, very exciting, he's asked us to come and visit Helen. So oh, I'm there. we'll put that in the diary with it. Um, yeah, I hope that has been useful. If people don't have any further questions, we won't keep you. It may be that you're all dying to email us with your specific context and find out more. So we will give you time to do that. Um, but what an exciting, what an exciting moment for you all. Um, and yeah, we hope that all of the resources that we've mentioned that we'll send out later are, are useful. I just want to say thank you for the opportunity to be able to share all of them. It's been loads of fun picking my top 10 out. And uh, I hope that that's just... Uh, giving you some inspiration anyway so really appreciate your time thank you thank you everyone have a good evening have a good evening bye